What's up, motherfuckers? It is Friday, July 5th, 2019. So I want to wish you a happy Friday. Of course, all of you in the States, I want to uh, wish you a happy 4th of July. I hope you had a happy 4th of July. Had fun at your barbecues and your cookouts and your, uh, you know, hanging out with your beers and your best friends. And of course, if you managed to make it downtown to Trump's uh, Salute to America, um, I hope you enjoy the festivities at the mall or wherever in DC that you did celebrate. So let's get right to it. The big topic in the news, of course, is salute to America, Trump's military parade, Trump's DC parade. So um, let's get it, give it some background. So, you know, this is the first military parade in, in DC for many, 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 many years. Um, and uh, this is the first time that a, a sitting US president got himself involved in the 4th of July uh, festivities in such a prominent and, and, and central way, right? Um, Usually a president would go out of town and, and spend time with the family or go back to his hometown or go to his vacation house or whatever. So, but Trump stayed in the city, um, hung out. So yes, let's give you some background. So we gotta blame Macron, right? Blame Emmanuel Macron, the French. Blame the French, those bastards, because they're the ones that put this, this idea into Trump's head, right? So Trump, a few years ago, went to visit Macron in France and on Bastille Day, which is the French sort of Independence Day, you know, uh, Macron impressed Trump with a big military style parade, you know, celebrating French independence. And I guess, I, I guess Trump got a big heart on, right? So he's like, God damn it, this dude Macron is outshining me, man. He looks better than me, he's younger than me, he's more sophisticated than me, his wife is older than mine, but I think I can outdo him. So he goes back, and of course, coming back from the G20, you know, he's talking to his boy Putin and his boy Kim, and he's like, man, you guys doing it big time over there with the military parades, man. Your people love you and they fear you, right? How can I get down with that? So Kim and you know Kim and him whispered. That's really the reason, the real reason he went to North Korea to get some you know inside dirt, inside dish. You know how to do it, how to do it big like Kim and the boys, right? So came back to the states, told his generals, "Hey Pentagon, I need some tanks, brother. I need some tanks on the mall. I don't give a shit. We'll, you know, how you get them there? Bring them there. I want them rolling down Pennsylvania Avenue, rolling down Georgia Avenue, rolling down 16th Street. I want them all over the states." You understand? So I guess I gotta get some bombers too. Give me some B-52s, give me some stealth, give me some F-35s, okay? If the Wright brothers are still around, tell them bring their ass down to DC, we need them. So Trump got his bombers and his planes and his tanks and his bombs and everything, right? So he wanted a little, little big man Trump, right? Little big man Trump wanted to show the world all his soldiers and his tanks and his planes and his bombs. And um, he did that, it was, it was uh, I guess a, um, a celebration of American history and American military power and pride. So uh, there was a little rain. There, you know, there's sorry to dampen your parade. Sorry to rain on your parade, Mr. Trump. But there was some rain in this parade. Um, so he had he had um, he had some rain. So it didn't come off as good as, as he wanted it to. He he had a big speech, um, which he sold tickets to, or did he give tickets to? Uh, there was there, anyway. There was a VIP section right in front of the stage where he was giving a speech that was only for Trump supporters and Republican National Committee donors and members. Right. So if you weren't down with the with the Godot boys, you wasn't you wasn't gonna get a front row seat. Anyway, so he had a little. He made a little speech. He actually. Uh, you know, was was crediting the uh, the power and the and the, the strength and the history of, of the, Re the Republican Army, uh, sorry, the Revolutionary Army. Uh, you know, George Washington's boys, right? And he was talking about how they they were so successful in the uh, you know their military campaigns and capturing land and territory and securing airports and and, and you know and winning against the the British. But then we have to realize it's like. But Mr. President, you know, the Revolutionary War was about 1776, wasn't it? Around that time. Um, I don't think there was any airports there. I don't think, I mean, there wasn't any planes, so there might have been airports, but no planes, right? So maybe there was airports, but no planes. Anyway, Trump, you know, maybe he got some info, information, maybe he knows, you know, secret JFK files also told him some shit that, yeah, man, we had some airplanes back in the day, but we didn't let it, other people know, right? Anyway, so yeah, he had a little, little slip step. According to a uh, raw story, the cameras at the mall were conveniently turned off. I guess he was trying to preempt, you know, the, uh, the, the inauguration crowd size fiasco. So he was like, you know what? No one's gonna question my crowd size because I'm just gonna take the cameras off. So whatever I give them, that's what they're gonna have to drink. Okay. So let's go, let's see what the crowd size is, the crowd size for his event is gonna look like now that the media and everything, you know, after the after uh, after effect is gonna happen. Right? Anyway, so uh, fireworks were canceled bec uh, after this is this is even after a. A private donor, a private Trump supporting donor, donated seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of fireworks to, to the event. For nothing, it was canceled. The fireworks was canceled. Boom. Uh, because I guess because of the weather. And the last thing I have to observe, and not the last thing, but a very important observation. Apparently, Melania Trump needs to learn how to wear a bra. Just look at the photo. 
And that's all I'm gonna say about that, right? So some of the critics, what are the, what are the haters talking about? What are the Trump haters talking about? Those, those, those goddamn Trump haters. Guy, guy can't do nothing right. You could find a cure for cancer, they'll still find a fault in it. So what, does, what do the critics, the haters, the naysayers, the, the contrarians say about old Mr. Trump and his big, big bash? Um, they're saying that it's a 20, it's, it's a taxpayer funded campaign rally. Uh, the cost is rumored to be upwards of 92 million with 2.5 million as an example coming from the National Park Service. So money that was supposed to be going to pay for national parks and, and, and pay for the, uh, the environment and protection of the environment went to Trump's, uh, Trump's rally. Uh, some are saying that it made DC look like the Red Square, Kremlin uh, or Pyongyang, North Korea, which is notorious for, you know, these type of military style parades and, 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 and shows of force, right? Um, you know, celebrating the, celebrating the military when he didn't even serve in the military, he got an exemption for bone, bone spurs, which his doctor came out recently, a few years ago, and said it was bullshit. Um, the doctor made up the, the, the bone spur diagnosis to get him out of serving in Vietnam. Uh, so he's, he's celebrating the military. He's not a military man. He speaks badly and poorly and, and insults military men like John McCain. And then of course his general. So his generals didn't attend the event because they don't agree with, you know, having the military being used as a campaign a rallying tool. And of course, uh, his, he has a history of generals leaving his administration, right? So, uh, you know, um, his, his Secretary of Defense, um, uh, Admiral McRaven, a lot of, of high-ranking military officials that were part of his administration have resigned over their disagreement with him or their, their, their feeling that he's, he's inept and he has no ability to run the country, n uh, much less the military, right? So he's got a lot of hate, he's got a lot of hate from the generals as well, um, as well as the media and, and the haters. Um, um, Fox News is calling those generals snowflake generals. Imagine that. These are Korean military men that have served their country their entire lives and Fox News is saying that these guys are snowflake generals because they disagree with Trump. So, so another thing that's happening this week uh, that we're all excited about is the, uh, the premiere of the third season of Stranger Things, right? So all of us that are big fans of the show, um, just the first, well, the season just launched uh, this, this weekend um, on Thursday. So we've got the long weekend to sort of binge on it. I haven't started watching the first uh, episode as yet. But before I do, and I will be giving my opinions and my thoughts on the show um, as I watch the third season. But... I just want to talk about Stranger Things in general. Um, yeah, wh what is Stranger Things? You know, so people who aren't familiar with the show, like, what is the show about? So the show is about, well, first of all, the most important thing, um, and I'll get to that later, is that the show is set in the 1980s, uh, a very important time that is critical to the show, a very important time period in, in, in history that really plays a big role in the show and why it became so popular, right? So the show is about a group of kids um, that uh, have some weird adventures, Stranger Things, right? So something happens to one of them, I won't spoil it too much for people who haven't watched the show and maybe, maybe they want to catch up on the first two seasons um, before they watch the, the third season this weekend. So yeah, it's about a group of kids, group of best friends, um, one, something happens to one of them, something very strange happens to one of them um, that brings the other groups, uh, the other friends together in trying to find him. Um, and then there's other people, it's a small town, it's a story set in a small town, so you have that small, time, term, uh, small town charm um, going for it. So yeah, they, they come together, they try to find him, uh, they encounter another, a little girl who also has a strange story about her, who's related to everything else, um, and they, they sort of bring her into their friendship and she becomes part of the story as well, important part of the story, and part of their little group, little, little friends. Um, so yeah, that's basically what the story is about. Kids growing up in a small town, um, going through their regular things going up, uh, you know, being friends, being, being children, and then encountering some strange things happening. So why has the show become such a pop cultural phenomenon, right? So it has become a pop cultural phenomenon because of its, its, its references to the 80s, right? So people love it because, you know, it, it, it reminds them of growing up in the 80s um, and, and a lot of things that happened in the 80s that the show references, right? So, you know, E.T. or, you know, the birth of sci-fi. So the 80s was the first generation, the first decade that really sci-fi really was out there and movies really got, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, special effects were happening in Star Wars and Star Trek and, and a lot of uh, Dune and a lot of, a lot of different E.T., uh, Spielberg. Um, a lot of different things, you know, 80s was like sort of the, the era of like the, the golden age of sci-fi, right? So the show is a sci-fi show and it takes place in the 80s. So people, the pop culturally, people love the show because it reminds them of how it was back in, the, back in the 80s. And people love, of course, nostalgia. They love to see the show referencing things. Um, um, that happened in the 80s. Music, of course, a lot of 80s music, 80s TV shows, 
uh, 80s music videos, uh, 80s fashion, um, 80s hairstyle, 80s sayings, uh, different things that just really, it, the show just sort of embodies what, what the 80s was for a kid, you know, so many of us that love the show, um, you know, we love it because it reminds us of, of growing up in the 80s, you know, so like, you know, we, most of the people, you know, that are at the age in their 30s and their 40s, uh, we grew up in the 80s, right? So the 80s to us is the age of, you know, the decade of coming of age for us, where we became kids into young people and into teenagers, right? So the show really has that, that call to us back to the, the simpler days, right? When we were just like those kids, right? So we put ourselves in, 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 in the minds and the shoes of those kids and having their adventure, right? So that's why we love the show. Um, why is it so? Why, why is the '80s so special, man? The '80s is so, so special because it was my generation, right? Um, it is the generation. Everything that we live on, we stand on in, in in the world, the modern world today, the internet, everything came from the '80s. The children of the '80s shaped the world we live in, right? The '80s was the first generation to have like TV, you know, in every home in terms of like around the world, uh, and, and and like TV in terms of TV shows, right? So in the '70s, uh, but the '80s was really the golden age of television shows and American television shows, right? And, and, and serials and sitcoms and, and, and those type of shows, right? Um, it was the first uh, d decade of music videos. So like it was the birth of M MTV, right? So music was boom and the fashion and everything was right on TV as well, right? Uh, video games, it was the first uh, generation of video games. So all the video games that's going on right now, PlayStation, Xbox, everything. Of course, in the, in the 80s, we had the Commodore, we had the Ataris, we had the Sega Master System, we had Nintendo, the first Nintendo, all of that stuff started in the 80s, right? So um, computers, the first computers, right? Started in the 80s. So now we're walking around with cell phones and everything, and we got pow more powerful computers in our palm of our hands than we did in the 80s, right? But all of that came from the 80s. So we are, the 80s planted the seeds that we are now reaping in the modern world, right? So that's why people love the 80s, that's why I love the 80s, that's why I love the show, right? So what makes the show so appealing to millennials? Of course, the 80s, people that grew up like me, grew up in the 80s and the 90s, and you know, we love it because it reminds us of being, of being you know, young. But why do millennials love it? Why, why, why is the show such a big hit even for millennials? Well, I think you know, it shows the commonality of, of just being kids, right? Having that, 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 that innocence and that, that, uh, you know, that, that yearning for adventure and independence, right? So, you know, when you're a kid on that, at that age, you're, you're 10, 11, 12, the same age around as the kids in the show, you do want independence, you do want adventure, you are living in your own sort of fantasy world, um, you're dealing with the realities of real life, you know, growing into an adult and having that friction between being a kid and being an adult, right? And having uh, people around you that maybe doesn't understand what being a kid is. We all we all went through that, you know, being a kid is, is kind of tough, right? Um, so. You know, that's why, that's why I think the connection is there with millennials. Um, the good thing is that I also see is that a lot of the millennial parents are from the 80s, right? So they've got, you know, you've got people in the 40s whose kids are in, are, you know, in their teens or, you know, below 10, uh, below 20, right? So they're able to enjoy the show with their kids. So you're having a family, the mom and dad grew up in the 80s, they appreciate the show for one reason, and then you have the millennials, the younger kids, looking at the show as well with their mom and dad, and appreciate the show for a different reason, because it has the same similarities of, of what they are growing up, right? Um, and, and, you know, it's a coming of age tale, it's growing up in a strange world, um, you know, it's, it's so symbolic of, of, of that journey you take as a child into becoming a, a, a young adult, right? So those are the things that are there for Stranger Things. So like I said, I can't wait to see the, the new season. I'll be talking more about you know, my feedback, my personal you know, opinion of the, of the new season as well as how it makes me feel. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you binge this weekend. On the, if you haven't seen the previous episodes, previous seasons, go out and check it out before you watch the new season so you get caught up on everything. So that's it. Hope you enjoy uh, Stranger Things season three this weekend. Another big story that's going on in the world of sports is that Kawhi Leonard maybe actually joining the Lakers, right? So I'm gonna call bullshit on that. I'm gonna call bitch move on that because I believe that it's the worst move that you could do, Kawhi. You can stay in Toronto and continue building your legacy there. You won a championship, you carried a whole team, you carried a whole country, took them to the finals, won a championship, won finals MVP. You got a whole country, right? So they're offering you everything you want. You got LA Clippers, your hometown team, that you can go and you can also start building your legacy there. You can get your number retired if you work hard and you win a championship there, right? You got a whole organization, you got the richest owner in sports, you got one of the best uh, coaches, top five coaches in sports, you got a great city, your hometown. So you wanna leave your, your nest egg, your golden goose in Toronto. You wanna ignore the courters, the suitors in LA, uh, the LA Clippers, and then when you, go, you wanna go play third fiddle 
to LeBron and Anthony Davis in LA. That would be the biggest bitch move. Bigger, bigger bitch move than LeBron going to, to Miami to join Dwayne Wade and, and Chris Bosch and winning a championship. I just saw no problem with that. Bigger bitch move than KD join, go, leaving Oklahoma and going to Golden State and joining Steph, Clay, and Draymond. Bigger move than that. I didn't see a problem with that. I see a problem with this because you're leaving a championship team. You won a championship last year. It's not like you lost and you failed and the team fucked up and, you, and they suck. They won, they won your championship, right? So if you're going to leave, the only place you should leave to is your hometown, LA. Yes, but to the Clippers, right? So you can, you can be your own man. Why would you be the number three person on the team when you can be the number one person on the team? You don't need them. You, already proven to, you have proven to the world that you can do it on your own. So go to LA, do it on your own. If you go to the, the Lakers, you're a bitch, and you're making a bitch move. I know you don't look at social media, I know you probably won't see this, but maybe you're one of your friends do, or you're one of your boys do. And if you do, please tell Kawhi that Gorilla Mike said, you a bitch, if you go to LA, it's a straight up bitch move, and Gorilla Mike will be talking about you all season long. So Kawhi, if you go to LA, you know what Gorilla Mike will say? Go fuck yourself. Also in the news, uh, some interesting stories from around the world, I guess. Uh, Alaskan heat wave, so Alaska, the last place on earth that you would think would be going through a heat wave. They have been going through a heat wave for all of June, all of July, they've had record breaking temperatures every day for Independence Day 2019. Yesterday, July 4th, Anchorage, Alaska hit 90 degrees Fahrenheit. 90 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a big risk of, to health, of course, and especially the environment. A lot of uh, chances for wildfires, especially with these idiots, with fireworks going off for uh, 4th of July weekend. And then, of course, melting uh, the, the sea ice, right? So the, the, the sea cannot produce ice because the temperatures are so hot. So there's no sea ice. Uh, in June, 60 dead seals washed up in Alaska. Um, scientists don't know why. They were skinny. They had no hair. Um, they're speculating that it might be because of the lack of sea ice. They had no place to rest. Of course, seals are out hunting in the open ocean, and they depend on sea ice to be able to get up on shore and rest, um, have their pups, um, escape predators. So the, the, the heat wave, although we might look at it as a funny story in Alaska, seeing people in Alaska in bikinis or you know, getting suntanned, it does have a, a damaging effect on the environment. And this, gives, as, this is another piece of evidence to show how much the, the, the climate is changing, right? So, you know, prayers with you guys in, in, in Anchorage, Alaska. Enjoy the weather, but, but remember, eh, this is not natural. Uh, another strange story coming from Russia. Wow, a conspiracy story, straight up, for, ready for you conspiracy theorists out there. So apparently, there was a fire on a secret Russian nuclear deep sea sub. Um, secret Russian nuclear deep sea sub killed, it killed 14 people, including, this is the important part. So this is a secret nuclear uh, sub, deep sea sub, I had, a, had a strange fire, um, killed 14 people, 14 sailors, including seven of Russia's top submarine captains or, or, or officials, two of which, received Russia's highest military honor. So this is the cream of the crop of, of, of Russia's uh, Soviet, uh, sorry, of uh, Russia's submarine fleet, right? So 14 of them died, seven of them of the big dogs, and two of them were the really, really big dogs, right? So we don't know what they were doing. Uh, Putin, um, he describes this, this is his words, quote unquote, big loss. Putin says this is a big loss. This is not a regular vessel. You and I know this. So Putin is saying this is not a regular vessel. You and I know this. Uh, this this uh, deep sea diving vessel that is capable of diving uh, up to 20,000 feet or more um, belonged to Kremlin's Directorate of Deep Sea Research. Apparently it was on a secret uh, experiment, secret mission, doing something, um, experimenting maybe with some undersea weaponry and something bad happened. And you have to understand, why were seven of the top guys in the Russian uh, Navy submarine, why were they on board that one ship? This is uncalled, you know, this, is, this doesn't happen. You don't put that amount of brass on one ship unless it was a big deal, right? So they were there, it was a big deal, something big was going down, an accident happened, fire started, they surfaced, people died, right? So, you know, for you conspiracy theorists out there, uh, another thing that's going on in the news, um, this is an interesting story, a woman in Texas, is facing 20 years in jail for going into a Walmart, opening a tub of ice cream and licking it, then closing it back and putting it back, right? Now, what type of fucking idiot leaves their house at 11 p.m. at night to go down to the local Walmart to do stupid shit, right? If you want to do stupid shit late at night, go down to the local train yard, find yourself a nice uh, parallel train track, a nice steel uh, iron train track, lay down on it till you hear some 
some rumbling, some shaking, you're gonna feel some shaking, and whatever happens, don't move. And just lay down on that goddamn train track until that, that, that noise passes, right? And that's gonna be doing you and the whole world a favor, okay? So, yeah, she's facing 20 years for a second degree felony of tampering with a consumer product. So if you go to a store and you see food on the shelf, you see drinks or whatever, things that people have to eat, and you open it up and you do stuff to it, you're tampering with food, you're tampering with a consumer product, you will go to jail and you will face a fine of up to 10,000 US dollars. That's what she's facing, this idiot from Texas. Right, so the video is out. I'll put a link to the video in the description. You can see it for yourself. If you know her, turn her ass in. I can't wait till they find her and they turn her in. We can see her on the news walking down looking like an idiot. You're gonna go to jail maybe for 20 years. You, you ruined your life in terms of the money you're gonna have to spend on, on lawyers and all of that shit. And you're gonna be on social media and you're gonna be a laughing stock. All to make a stupid point. And you got some idiot with the camera. Um, instead of telling you to stop and hey, behave yourself, you're doing stupid shit, he's like, go ahead, do it. I'm gonna get some views on YouTube or wherever the hell I'm gonna post this video. And that's what happened. And now you're getting posted, you are getting a lot of likes um, on the uh, police bands. They got an APB out for your ass. So, once again, um, to the woman who licked the tub of ice cream in Walmart in Texas, Gorilla Mike says, you can go fuck yourself. So that's it for me, guys, uh, for the week. I hope you enjoyed your week. You had a great um, holiday weekend coming, coming, um, coming up. Enjoyed your 4th of July. Uh, enjoyed your week of, at work if you're not in America. Um, have fun this weekend, Friday. Have, hang out with your friends, drink some beers. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the motherfucking channel. Right? Hit that bell so you get all my notifications. And most importantly, if you don't like my video and you don't like my views and opinions and like what I have to say, then you can go Fuck yourself. This is your boy, Gorilla Mike. I'm out.